Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my another video of the full stack clone application. And here we are building stack overflow clone. So this is the last video. I mean we have already built at least 80% of the, the application. We have built the APIs for the question, answers, comments, and we also built the partial UI. How it really looks like, what all different components we have, the routing, uh, Redux slices, all the, the different stuff we have already explored on this uh, particular videos. So there are already four videos we have created. This is the fifth video, which will talk about the remaining part. And then you can extend it further based on your requirement, because this is not the whole full stack clone application of stack overflow clone. We cannot build the whole stack overflow in five videos. Okay. So it's just like a prototype, which you can extend, you can uh, enhance and you can reuse this code. This is what I'm doing. So we already have this answer controller, question controller and uh, services. Here you can see our APIs. So I wanted to add a couple of attributes while submitting the answers. If you are following my previous videos, then yeah, uh, understanding this particular video is very easy. There are already four videos in which we have already done lots of work. Now we are going to build on top of that. So here uh, from the front end, we are making lots of call and we are uh, populating our Redux state. So this is our, you can see our how our Redux state looks like. So we have questions, selected questions. Similarly, there are answers we are going to fetch. When you click on to particular node, particular question, then we are fetching the answers also. And then our Redux state looks like this. Selected question and the answers of that because you will be able to click on one question at a time and then we will be populating the answers of that selected question. So this is our Redux state tree. So we have these set of uh, questions. And then when you click on to that, we are populating this selected question, which contains this object and then the answers the list of answers for that. Okay. So what we have done uh, recently on that, I will talk about that. So couple of attributes we need to add like while submitting the answers. So this is our domain answer, answer controller, answer entity. I want to have a user metadata also another property which contains, okay, who is the user submitting the answer? You can add more attributes if you want. So this is going to be JSON B. Okay, user metadata and while creating it, while creating the answer. So this is where we are creating the answer update question by ID. Okay, I'm inside answer service. So answer controller. Here we are creating a create answer of a question. Here we should be passing the user ID. Similarly, I can pa pass user metadata that contains, okay, the email current logged in user email. And we already have a user object here. So we can get user dot email. So it's like additional property I wanted to populate so that I know, okay, who is the user submitted the email. Other than that, uh, we can also populate more properties while even creating a question also. So, okay, da, 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 da. because token contains only UID and the email. That's the disadvantage we have. Let me see what all properties we get inside the token. And then we can think uh, what all other properties we can populate. As far as I know, we only have a user ID and the email. Okay, network and then here I will try to get the token. This is the ID token we have. If you try to look into this token, what all properties does it have? So ta -ta -ta, let's see what the what is the content of this token. So where we can check using jwt.io. And inside this, we just paste this JWT token and here we get all the, the properties. Uh, I was checking for the picture object. Yes, we do have that. So I can use that picture object in the uh, backend picture name also we have. 
so we have lots of properties why we are just storing user id and email okay so i will try to decode the picture and the name object also picture and name so that we need to do in our auth package the api auth auth guard auth strategy here it is decoding the token and returning the user object i'm not sure what uh, what is the content of this user because this is a we are the server side we are getting okay because this is the user object we are attaching to the the request object so i can just try to print console.log user i think it doesn't contain all those attributes which we are thinking otherwise we can just decode this token and just add that in the payload because this token contains a lot more attributes like user id expiry email and all and tata issuer okay that's fine now if i try to fit any protected api i should be able to see that in the logs so where do we have that object so this is the interceptor that will be okay let me check the logs first i don't see that coming inside the logs okay this is console.log user object we are doing validate this is our auth strategy and that should execute whenever you are creating a question submitting the answers and all so answer controller we are having this auth guard we should get something in the the logs looks like console logs are not even coming in over this okay that's fine so what we will what i will try to do is uh, this is my api right id answers here i will try to pop, copy this console.log user object my api is uh, questions id answer so questions id answer or maybe i'm not restarting the server so that's not getting reflected okay i can see this now okay and i have all the properties so what i can do is inside a user metadata we can populate the picture and user id we already have that's as a uid so we can also store the name and the picture okay so this is of user metadata i will have a name this can be the opener properties picture is also of type string an optional property so while you submit the answer we are populating the user metadata so here picture user dot picture so we have email picture and the name user dot name because this user metadata we can use at the front end to show who is the submitter who created the question all these properties we can populate there and inside a question controller also while creating the question so this is get this is post create question here also we are populating user metadata we can populate more attributes and now what i will do is i will try to clean up my database and try to populate some the some of these attributes so this is my questions comments i will just truncate these things right so i can just truncate all the data is gone now we can use the apis to hit uh, and create a questions so i will be creating questions like this simple technology tags tags also we are going to use at uh, different places node.js react next.js okay what all technology we are using firebase these are the tags technology javascript we can use these tags to show somewhere and then we will see where we can show that uh, we can just create a couple of uh, questions and these we can use to display okay the name profile here and the email and all these information 
right now it's not showing the data so here i'm getting questions so here user metadata i'm getting the whole properties okay something wrong we are putting user metadata inside user metadata maybe i copied paste and things gone wrong here if you can see let's uh, delete the data of our questions is it not allowing me then i will reset the identity truncate that it will allow i will create the data again one record it's fine now that's correct three four and i will reload my app and i can see some data coming now so this is now we can also show the picture so we'll go to the component which is displaying it so what what our layout looks like if you see our uh, routes and all those are very simple so this is our ui index.ts this is my app component and here i'm having these simple routes this is for question detail component but here i'm rendering only the same component if the path parameter is pa being passed this is how you capture the path parameter if you are passing the params in the route uh, path right so if the id is there that means we are going to show only the that particular question with the answers if the id is not there that means it's a landing page we are just showing the question feed okay so i'm just talking about question feed now here we got the question data and inside this i will just try to show no ta -ta 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 -ta, question question id so these are all the answers and here because there are uh, two places where we can show the properties so post dot image So here we are showing question text so here inside a user so there is a user metadata i think user metadata dot picture right user metadata dot email picture and it should be coming now i can see and also you can uh, show the email with the avatar we can also show the email property with h6 we can also show like uh, who is the what is the name Maybe this is post info so we are showing the name and email inside the post body we are showing the post text url and the default image we are we have added so we just need to tweak uh, styles a little bit so this is how we know like who is the submitter of this question and now when i click on to this page what i'm doing is i'm just switching to this route question question id and what i'm doing with this question id is we are going to make an action make a call to the api so this is the question answer feed and here i'm using select questions uh, selected question selector if you see our slice question slice we are making two calls one is to fetch all the questions another is to fetch a selected question with its answers right so here i'm doing it and we have three different state pending uh, fulfilled and rejected and i'm populating the data inside a selected question same i'm exposing through this selector and this selector i'm using inside this component so i'm getting all the question like there is a question object not an array that contains all the answers so it's like the same component we are reusing here for answers we are just uh, iterating on to the answers object and displaying the information like who submitted the answer and all these properties so that also we can populate user metadata and then there is a picture object this is the user who submitted this and user metadata dot name and created that property we have picture answer text that's good so what we need to do is we need to create submit some answers from the api so this is my question id let's say this is my question id i will submit some answers for it question id answers 
and this is just like a random text we are creating firebase id has token has expired okay we we need to get the new one so ta -da -ta -da, here we can get currently we are not passing this uh, token to the APIs because currently we are not hitting any protected APIs like when you are creating when you are submitting the answer or when you, whenever you are creating the question then you need to pass this authorization header which you have which you can store inside a Redux state or the local storage currently we are creating resources through the APIs which should not be happening we have a model pop-up which I have created using that we can what happened I took the fresh token. Is it logged out? Okay, I need to log in again. And then I will get the token again. This token should work. So let's copy this token, put it in our swagger spec and submit the answers. This should work. Okay, this is working and we are submitting the answers. So I will just submit some of the answers. And then there is an upvote and downvote st system also. We already have the APIs. You just need to dispatch an actions for that. You need to be a protected user because we, we need to know who is the user uh calling this api so now what i will do is i think this is the last answer two three four i will go there and here you can see i still not able to get the picture so this is how we are able to fetch the answers right so let's see what happened answers feed here we are passing questions and then questions answer dot map so here we are saying is user metadata picture user metadata dot name this is the answers object okay let me see what what we are getting inside answer object so that we can decide okay what what is coming and what is not coming so this is answer object Inside this, I can see user metadata, which contains a name, email, and a picture object, picture properties. So answers, name, email, and the picture. It should show something. Yeah, it's coming now. You can see at least the name uh, picture is not coming. So picture, what happened with this? User metadata. Dot picture this is the avatar component maybe something uh, is not coming correctly I will reload the page and see okay that's a little strange but here in the Redux state I can see so these are like small things uh, we can ignore for now if you can see our state chart so what we are getting we are getting this data object inside this data we have a meta data and that contains name email and a picture object and inside answers question data dot answers okay so data this is like this is for this we are using youth selectors and then there is an answers which is an array and inside answers we have these all the properties answer text comment user id user metadata and all the properties okay this is the answers object and i have four answers which i can see on the screen so, so this is like when you click on to this you should be able to fetch the answers and then you can also provide an option of upvote and downvote right there are four answers upvote and downvote is we already have the apis so this is upvote and downvote i guess yes this one 
so here you need to select either you are sending a foot and downward and for this question id and answer id simple right now uh, we can also play with these tags which are coming in the left hand side we can populate that from the redux state not just like a hard coded uh, tags what we need to do for this is question slice we already have are fetching the list of questions like fetch questions the list of top 10 questions right now once the uh, this promise is resolved pending idle right action dot payload we can uh, get all the questions and we can collect all the tags tags are like string uh, elements right so inside our components let's go to our component here we are talking about sidebar options so this is the sidebar options here we can so we already dispatched it so this is our overflow here okay here we are not dispatching the action overflow header ta, ta, ta. this is header and this is sidebar so i don't want to call uh, and get the i don't want to dispatch this action again so let's say whenever you dispatch an action from here okay the only thing is when you are on the another page so on the home on the landing page i can show because in the question field we are dispatching these questions and we are we already have a data in the redux state so what i will do is i will copy this because we already dispatching it on the home page so this is our sidebar and i will just get this through the selector import all the missing things we are getting questions so here i will try to collect all the tags so questions dot map so we are iterating on each and every question i dot eggs so what it will give us it will give us the array of a string nested array array of string where the strings are comma separated uh, i dot tags so if you see the output will be like this node.js react comma node js and web something like this so what we need to do we need to merge these but each and every array index we need to splice it and then we need to get the all the elements so for that we, this is an array so we can do map again because this map contains only the tags this is like a new array with this properties and I, because i want to do the manipulation in these properties or we can simply do for each forget about this thing so we are getting each and every element right and for each and every element which is of type string array What we will do is we will have a another array which is okay the application tags is an empty array and this application tags we just need to split it and we just need to push it why it is still complaining and then app tags dot push so we need to first uh, split these elements and get the uh, string tags question eggs equal to i dot split based on comma so this will give us the array simple array with uh, two string properties like node.js and react now we need to just push these elements so question tags dot uh, I mean it's not really nice code post tag off question tag and app tags dot push tag and there may be a duplicates so how should we make sure that it doesn't have a duplicates 
So before we start rendering them, we can just remove the duplicate duplicates because it's a string array. So ta -ta -ta, here we can have a simple state const because this will give us the final array of app tags and that application tags we can just show here but this will have a duplicate so how can we get rid of duplicates before even push i can just check the condition okay app tags dot includes tag if it is there don't include it if it is not there if it is false then only push it what happened app tags app tags is of type string array so here we will check includes is false then we will just only push and then app tags we can just iterate here So we can just run a simple map. Okay, here what I will do is if we have app tags and app tags dot length is greater than zero, then we can just render these app tags dot map. We'll just copy one div and what we need to do we need to display just the name so let's say if app tags are not there right then we need to show it uh, if app tags are not there then we just show the default tags so this is null then we can show these existing default tags why it is complaining let's see so this is the div one common parent okay let's i will create something let's format this okay i'm just trying to fetch the tags from there and okay we did small mistake i guess and you can see the tags right now there can be another route where you can just fetch only a tag specific to particular technology like when you click on java node.js and all now when i click on to this so we have this because this is inside a redux state so we can just uh, remove the else statement because we may not need it we are getting all the tags from our redux state we need to clean this code a little bit for now i'm just leaving it uh, like this so this is how we are getting the state and we are able to show the tags now let, let's say we are adding a questions of multiple different different tags so those tags will keep populating here so let's say my tag is uh, aws java auth0 and this is lambda so we are creating these uh, random questions and then i will reload and i can see the, these different tags coming up you can just color them style them all those things you can do and when you click on to individual there can be another route where you can just fetch the questions related to that particular tag only because we already know that this is a particular tag right so what I can do on this home page, this is just like a simple filter. When you click on to this, I can just pass a filter on this question API that we can extend because this fetch question is currently is taking search term, right? Also tags, if you remember, we are passing the tags also. So if you see the code, are we using these tags in our API? Chart source app domain. So this is my question controller and this is the list of all the questions. This is create question. This is 
get all questions and we are passing search params so i think we are using tags somewhere yeah so tags tags dot length and here we are using this tags query that's smart so we can pass this uh, search parameter so currently if you see the ui slice question slice we are not passing the tags so we are just passing simply like this we can have a separate uh, api class and we can do something like this or uh, let's play simple we let's do simple fun fetch question filters okay based on some filters here we need to pass okay currently i'm just passing only the tags simple one single tag right and how we are how we have written api let's say i'm just passing node.js and i will be getting only four questions if i just pass lambda and i should get only two records that's good so this is how we are passing tags equal to a single tag so now we are just passing only single tag tags equal to lambda so if tags you are passing then x equal to the tag value so it's like a same api call with just passing the tags as a filter and fetch question filters we need to override the same state i can have a three more blocks but it will be updating the same state ideally we should have only one single api call for doing all these things fetch question filters so this is rejected fulfilled and pending rest all is fine like it just like setting up the same properties or do we need to create a new one no right sometimes we are just uh, creating unnecessary functions here we can pass tags which is an optional of type string if we are passing tag then we can construct a url like that const url equal to if the tags is being passed then my url will be something like this otherwise my url will be like this so here we are passing tags if tags value is there otherwise we are just passing and then this is the url just pass the url that's it you don't need to do much and then it just only like okay when you are selecting this we need to trigger this fetch actions again using dispatch so sidebar options when you click on to these we can have a on click on these nodes handle click or you can just pass this text handle click and and pass this text so what is the tag value this is the i so we just need to handle this method So here we are passing tags is of type string and we can just import the use the use dispatch const okay selector we don't need we just need to use dispatch equal to use dispatch and what we need to do we need to just dispatch okay fetch all questions what was the method which we were calling here inside question feed fetch questions right so i will do the same from the sidebar so dispatch fetch questions and here i will be passing tags so i think uh based on my understanding this would work fetch questions if you are passing tags then this is the url otherwise this is the url let's play with this 
Okay, there is some error. Question slides, terminal. Go to the React app. Let's fix the error. Okay, now if I click on the lambda. Hey, uh, I understood what happened when you click on the lambda. Uh, it might have not received any property inside Redux state. So you can see our Redux state tree became empty. Selected question questions data is empty. Is it making any API call? Let's see. So what happens when you click on React? Okay, it's not making API call. This is 500 internal server error. Obviously, if it is breaking, then we can't do anything. Let's fix that. What happening is any and okay, we need to pass the piece and limit. I think that we are passing it. Okay, this is the problem. We forgot one attribute that caused the overall problem. So tags equal to this and piece and limit. Node.js one, uh, one problem I also know because these are tags we are extracting from the questions array. So when I click on lambda, you can see the tags are also getting reduced. I can see only the two questions based on the tags, but these tags on the left name, we are constructing through the, uh, the response coming from the questions slice. So obviously it will change. We need to fetch the tags in maybe a separate API call, which can fetch all the question, all the question tags throughout the application, right? Not just depends on some data. So here you can see Firebase, I can see only one, two blocks. When I click on Java, I can see respective blocks of Java, React, Firebase, Node.js. So this is how it is working. And it is populating the Redux state also properly as expected. You can see all the questions and when you click on an individual question, it is taking us to the response also. Currently there are no response submitted for this. Now, what we can do is when you click on to this or when you click on to this, here you can submit your question. You can see you can submit your question and here you can submit your answer. So this is the question and you are submitting answer for that. We can also populate uh, the question here uh, before submitting the answer. This is just like, okay, this is how you can submit. So here we need to trigger two actions because we are submitting the answer. So we need to trigger an API call by passing the data and then just take this page to the home page. Otherwise we need to uh, update our update our state accordingly so that, that this data can be re-rendered with the newly submitted question. Okay, so let's take a little pause and then uh, we can also handle how we are adding a new questions and how we are submitting an answer for a question. Similarly, the upvote and downvote. Currently, this upvote and downvote property is coming from the question. So upvote and downvote will belongs to the response. So we will add that to the each and every answers like, okay, this answer has a hundred upvotes and zero downvote. That means that is the answer from the stack overflow. Okay, so what is next? Uh, we are able to show all the answers and now we can actually uh, do the upvote and downvote so for that i came to the questions and here we can write on click methods so this is upvote these are the properties we are getting from the apis like how many upvotes you have once you fetch the questions like all the answers for uh, particular questions you also get the upvotes and downvotes here, if I try to fetch all the answers, then I do get the upvote and downvote. Or when you try to get the question by ID, you are getting an array of answers, right? Here you can see upvote and downvote. These properties will show you, okay, how many upvote and downvote we have. And then you can use this API call, question ID answer, answers and answer ID to send the upvote and downvote. So how the URL will look like. So here is a question ID and answer ID. Can I pass empty body? Okay, we need to 
oh, not found okay yeah, these ids are not found but this is how our api url looks like we need to build it so upvote and downvote here i can just say handle upvote and i can pass uh, properties here which is so first of all the answer id or the question id are we getting the question id post dot id will be the question id okay post dot id and then so this post dot id is a question id and then underscore a dot id is an answer id similarly we need to write on click on the downvote These are the icons handle down vote and then we will write actions for this so here we can just write these methods on stuff vote const handle down vote So it is taking two parameters let's say question id and answer id both are to of type string it's type script so you need to define the types or override the types defer the types to any if you don't know the types for now so handle download here we need to dispatch an action Okay, we don't have a dispatch, so we need to get the dispatch first. Use dispatch and then dispatch. What we need to do? We need to send upward and downward. So for that we need to create an actions, asynchronous actions inside the answers. Okay, here this is good or we can have just only one method based on that we will handle it so here it is update uh, or you can say update answer upvote and downvote answer votes and your url because that's based on what you are sending so here it is a question id and then there is an answer id that is of type string and uh, is it upvote or downvote so if it is not upvote then it is obviously downvote so if it is true that means you are doing upvote if it is false then it means it's a downvote let's uh, take it like this okay and why it's not uh, async answer slice question slice Obviously, we need to make it a sync. Maybe I didn't update this code. So this will also be a sync, and here we can just do simple await uh, resolve the data. So this is my answer slice update answer votes. Just, uh, something wrong what happened uh, with this question id is declared but okay that is fine we will use these properties and axios dot put this is what we are doing payload body is empty and here we need to build the url so if question id and answer id both will be there this is our url We should create a separate class for these things. So if it is upvote, upvote means we need to consider that this is upvote. Then this is the question ID. This is answer ID. Action type upvote, and if it is something else. Okay, we can add this uh, directly here. Why we need this much ternary operation? 
because it's all about changing a single string okay so here i can do something like this it's a running expression if it is root is there then return this otherwise return this uh, action type is down vote this looks correct question id what is good here mm, argument type question id string vote so oh, it is complaining question slice So here I'm just saying is that update answer votes, create a sync tongue, parameter name, and then a sync function return. Okay. No overload match of this call. I mean obviously I need to handle it here, but uh not sure why it is complaining we'll figure it out so do we need to deal with this through the do we need to update the state when these calls are being made i don't think we need to handle it at all because we are not going to update the state and uh, refetch the, the state again i'm just trying to fix this what is this error because i can pass the multiple arguments This is the callback, async id, and this is await exios.put. Sometimes these TypeScript errors use uh, unknown signals. You don't know what to, what to fix. It's not assignable to parameter of type async tongue creator any and the string state unknown. So it looks like we can only pass a single argument. So I converted this, this into an object question id answer id vote and it's a vote and down vote based on the, the the vote flag which is of type boolean here we can specify create the type okay question id is of type string vote is of type boolean that's sometimes unnecessary question id is of type string answer id is of type string vote is of type boolean or create a separate interface for it that's better okay update answer votes so this is something which we can dispatch from this action from this question tsx dispatch what happened dispatch is already there and then here and pass all the properties inside an object so we are passing question id answer id and then vote flag to true that's a true and now we need just need to import this this is what is being sent as a true this is handle down vote this is up vote and this is down vote here we can just pass the vote boolean false I mean anyway you can manage that so this is how we can send actions to our redux now if i click on to this this is making uh, api calls if we see the network tabs 404 that means these ids are not found okay it's not like questions question id answer answer id question id is a19 that is correct answer is this action type is down vote okay let's see what is the error we are getting okay so let's debug this issue what is causing this 500 error and i think this token is expired 
that's why we are getting 500 ideally from the api side we need to have proper exception filter that should give us okay it is unauthorized not 500 that we will fix so what i will do is currently this what we are doing is we are trying to update the upvote status for that you need to be logged in and we are not passing the authorization header that's the problem right so how can we get the access token and pass in the this async action so that we will see i was looking into documentation and here we can pass the second argument get state inside a create async thunk that will give you the current state of the whole tree and then you can access dot user what do we have is i was trying to print this okay now that is gone so here uh, if you just see if i click on the last and if i do the upvote and downvote what is happening i'm getting the whole object so inside a user user dot user dot access token this is what i need right the state dot user dot user dot access token so state dot user dot dot user dot access token this is what i need and this state is of type any so this is the access token we are getting and this we need to pass in the put method exios config url data and the config okay inside this we can submit the headers inside header authorization and we have this token we can pass the access token So this access token we can pass in the authorization bearers okay so and the content type is fine exuse.put config body is empty let's try to see if it works now so we go here upvote and downvote 400 bad request because i think the body is being passed empty answer text must be longer okay that i don't like so body we kept uh we should kept body optional or from the apis we can just remove the body because it's upvote and downvote we are not doing we are not doing update answers so i will just remove that so this is answer api post and this is our put api i will just remove the the body part update question by id we don't have body and we are fine if we don't have body okay here we are passing this body in the upvote and downvote but th that is only for updating the upvote and downvote not the payload body okay now i will just check my apis again ending okay worked right so here we got the downvote now i click on upvote upvote downvote upvote one upvote downvote and here what we are returning that also need i need to see answer service okay return dot save So instead of this, what we can return is we can return the updated answer object. Okay. Return await this dot answer repo dot find one where ID is. We already have answer ID. So this we can return that will give us the whole object. Okay, now I will do this uh, thing again. I can do a foot and I can see Firebase ID token expired that I don't like. So what we need to do, we need I need to log out and log in. This Firebase ID token I'm extracting from the Redux state only. So whatever the token we are passing, that should be the correct token. So I will go to the last question that has answers, and you can see the upvote vote, down votes are coming, right? I will just increase the vote here and you can see now upvote is 1 I will do a downvote 
you can see upvote downvote one upvote okay now the rest all the things is okay once you do the upvote and downvote update your redux state with the appropriate data and i mean refetch this particular set of answers once you do the upvote and downvote or you update the payload with the updated uh, so we already have this list of answers right so you can update the state by updating this particular property and you don't need to refetch the whole list again this is the problem standard problem when you do any actions and then how can you refetch the whole data to refresh the ui because currently the redux state doesn't have this data okay so now you can add a couple of more things like add action so this is a model pop-up similarly we have add question here how we can do it we can uh, fire a call so we already have a question slice so we can play with that so okay this is api so i am going to the apis again and again so this is my question slice here i can uh, have another action what it will do is create question so instead of fetch question it will be create question i think you need to change these properties do not have duplicates otherwise your actions will overwrite i mean your redux state will be destructured distorted or whatever you call it and this is what is your api call exios dot post and you will be sending a payload so exios dot post and here you need to get the token same as we are getting the token here i mean there can be a better way of accessing getting the token like this so this is get state we need to we did get state is a second argument of this uh, async what happened so string this argument and get state is of type any let's say and get state you can call this is you can get the current state and from the state you can get the access token exios dot post url url my url is a questions and here you will pass the body so we are going to pass the whole payload payload we are going to pass that we are going to pass inside the exios.post and here we are going to have the headers inside header we can populate authorization so for this kind of thing like where you are actually populating the redux populating the data and making the api call you can have a separate api layer you can create a separate component inside sr so you can create api there you can create a external api class.ts and define all these methods now uh, question slice answer slice this get state was second argument it was not complaining here a sync why it is complaining optional for parameters okay this is not optional this is required payload and authorization so here we need to pass the bearer bearer authorization header and we can just say this is my access token okay content type and all are preset so this is response.data so this is how you will be creating questions this is the protected api we need to be logged in for that this is how we are getting access token from the current state get state so state.user.user.access token we are passing access token in this api so this is how you are going to trigger the api calls for protected apis and create questions once the question is created we don't need to append it to our question list on the home page we can redirect and there we can because there we can see the latest questions being appended or what you can do is you already have a question list so this is how you will do it uh fetch questions we are having this questions object inside data you can push the newly payload response so when you create a question what happens so let's say this is your question once you create it you get the payload object right currently this token has expired uh, let's play with this on the ui fetch question so similarly we have a create question so we can define these three different types 
that promise pending rejected or unfulfilled so this is create question dot rejected fulfilled or pending pending uh so here we are creating questions so we need to make sure that we are not doing something wrong if it is pending type so you can just uh questions we don't need to uh make it empty what we are doing is don't do anything return the current state okay then this is a full field that means we got the data so what we need to do here is return a state dot questions dot data because dot data is already an array dot data dot push action dot payload that's for being safe side okay then state dot questions don't do anything just return the state we are not doing anything here here we are just updating this particular data property by action dot payload so for create question we need to trigger this async action from your component create question payload payload contains what all properties if you see inside create question question text url image technology uh, i mean what all are required uh, i'm not sure we need to check but these properties you can populate so there is already a question box here we have this simple model pop-up and here we are doing submit so we already have a dispatch so what we will do is dispatch create question and just pass your payload right so this is how you will be able to create a question in the system and now in the create question uh let's say so now i will just hard code these properties we already have input text field from that we can pass all these properties so reload it create question hello add question and then we will see if it really working otherwise we will fix it so add question questions okay this api call triggered post and we are sending this authorization header you can see so that is also perfectly fine the only thing is we can just capture the question text from our whatever you are typing here right for that it's easy uh we already have this question input url question property for the input text field i think we have input text field here model pop-up and input text field question so this question property we will populate here this is our question text and we will add it rest all the other properties like tags technology you can have a simple nice form and you can submit the question okay so this is i will reload the page and try to see my new question so here i will add a new question I entered a long text, add question, and then once it is done, okay, there is some error. Let's see what it is. Question text is going empty. And why that is? Question text is not populating this uh, set question. Set question, I mean, when you are typing something in this input text field, we are updating this question property. So that means this question is property is not being updated. Let's change. Simple debugging, this question is coming empty. That's strange. So maybe some other properties are being duplicated here. That question we are putting when you are typing something on change on this. Okay. I think I kind of, I kind of got it. So let's say you entered something okay this is going empty 
Yeah. What is this? We just have on chains given dot target dot value. Set question. This value is question. So this question should be gets updated. I am kind of surprised why that is not happening. So there is input text field. You are typing something and doing submit. Okay. This question property should have the updated value. What can be wrong here? Dispatch create question. Do we have? Or I will just do handle change. So here we I will just write const handle change. That's the same method. Here we are going to do is set questions event dot target dot value. This is HTML input element. By the way, set question. Okay, handle change. Okay, let's change. I can just try to console.log if it is even getting this event.target.value because it's control component, and whenever you are typing, it's showing it. That means it is having this value. Okay, what is this call being made when you change this input text field? Okay, there were two input text fields and on one we can see this is input text and this is for the URL. I check the code and then this is simple input text field on change handle change we are updating the state now it is coming that was totally strange maybe the component we were using and here you can see all the values are getting printed and what happens is here I will enter my question and this is like second input text field is about the, the link if you want to add some link of an image or anything let's say do we have any image we can put that image here and then add question so it is able to add a question you can see a new question has been added and once the question is added you can cancel this and then we can refetch the data and here in the bottom we added a question why it's not showing maybe due to the limit we are passing in the network tab for fetching the the default list of questions so we can increase the limit to page one limit thousand we are already passing fetch question answers let's see what happened on the landing page so we created a couple of questions here this is my question so what is the network call if you see Okay, this is my payload and question text is just a string okay we were overriding all the other parameters that's why so now yes this is the question we have added right okay uh, because i was overriding these uh, rest of other other properties like the tags and technology and the placeholder image so you can see the same set of uh, things popping up this is the question this is the long text we were adding this is the question so this is all i mean uh, i don't want to invest more effort on this but you can extend this example you can add more async actions like fetch questions uh, submit answers uh, upvote downvote that is already happening right how to learn react and here we can do upvote and downvote these api calls and then once you reload the page 
it we are able to see the upvote and downvote be, being populated here we can see upvote and downvote so it is just all about simple poc demo and uh, playing with the, the tools and the technology so this this was the last video because i wanted to cover some of these async actions like the fetching the list of questions based on some filters like the tag filters and submitting the questions submitting the upvote and downvote so i will just submit this i will just push this code whatever we have done to the github and then you can just take the download and uh, build on top of that so thanks everyone thanks for watching this is the the good learning for everyone i was also playing with the redux toolkit uh, these days because i work on the different things and sometimes i don't have a track on what all the changes we have so i was just working on the swell kit swell js and uh, their uh, their the way in which we manage the state is totally different than what we do in the ngrx angular and using redux in react so th thanks for being a nice audience and that's all we are closing the stack overflow and we will build our uh, existing clone apps and we will build a more sophisticated me more production ready stuff there it was all about okay i wanted to target five hours content but it took more than that just an idea is just to give you the prototype which you can extend and build on top of that